By the late 1950s, Universal had gotten away from doing their classic monster movies. The Creature from the Black Lagoon was the final nail in that coffin. However, by the late 1950s, Hammer Studios, based out of the UK, had started remaking the classics, bringing them into the modern day by filming them in color, bringing them into a more gothic tone and setting, and introducing more blood, sex, and violence. And one of their most successful movies was, well, one of their first ones. It's The Curse of Frankenstein. By the time of the late 1950s, Universal had washed their hands of their classic monsters. And when Universal left the building, Hammer Studios entered. Despite Hammer Studios existing since the late 1920s, they were about to become the new kings of the monster movies. After producing one of the first, if not the first, X-rated movie in British cinema history, The Quartermass Experiment, they would begin churning out the monster movies. And their first one was their version of Frankenstein, called The Curse of Frankenstein. And this movie would pretty much assemble the team that would carry Hammer forward throughout the next decade and a half. Terence Fisher in the director's chair, who would direct many of Hammer's best movies, and stars Peter Cushing, who would become the centerpiece for the Frankenstein series, and Christopher Lee, who, even though he would star in this movie, he would become an even bigger star in Hammer's next big series. In terms of Frankenstein movies, everybody remembers the American version from 1931. However, and I think I may be in the minority on this one, but I believe that The Curse of Frankenstein is the better version. Not only did Hammer Studios bring Frankenstein into the modern day by shooting it in color, but they also upped the gore, the sex, and the violence. This movie turned Peter Cushing into a horror movie icon, and in my opinion, the greatest Frankenstein that we will ever get. He's best known as playing Grand Moff Tarkin in the original Star Wars. However, he had a long and lengthy career even before Star Wars, and even a little bit afterwards. And as I said, he would become the centerpiece of the franchise. Unlike Colin Clive, who only stayed around for two movies, Peter Cushing would become the focal point of the series, and would focus on him creating a new monster every movie. And unlike Colin Clive's Frankenstein, who has a moral center, Peter Cushing's Frankenstein is a dick. Peter Cushing's Dr. Frankenstein has no qualms with killing people and just generally being an ass to anyone that stood in his way. He treats his mentor, someone who helped him learn everything that there was to know about science, like dirt, and he treats the woman that he's supposed to marry like a complete and total asshole. But in a weird, roundabout way, Peter Cushing makes it work. And opposite of Peter Cushing is Christopher Lee, who plays the creature. This is his only appearance in the Hammer Frankenstein series, however, he would become the centerpiece of Hammer's Dracula series, but more on that in a little bit. But the biggest difference between the Universal Frankenstein and the Hammer Frankenstein is lies in the production design. Hammer made their Frankenstein movie look lived in and just downright filthy. And because the movie was shot in color, you get a new dimension as to how evil Dr. Frankenstein truly is, bringing the dead back to life. It's not done in a grandiose and OTT fashion like sometimes in the Universal Frankenstein. When life is brought back, it's treated like a, oh crap, we just brought life back. And the moral dilemma is, is this the right thing to do? These themes were touched on in Universal's Frankenstein, but Hammer made that the centerpiece. And at the end of the day, whether you love this movie or you hate it, you got to admire Hammer for taking a different approach with their version of Frankenstein. Because Universal was watching them like a hawk, trying to make sure that they did it, that Hammer didn't rip them off. And despite not having all of the hallmarks of a traditional Frankenstein movie, this movie is Frankenstein through and through.